Hello guys, Namaste. I am Jagdish from Aerospace Department of RVC College. Today we are discussing about water splitting by using metals or metals used for water splitting at nanometal stage. Basically, we are not using directly metals. We are using their metal oxides, mainly cobalt oxide, nickel iron layer double hydroxide, nickel oxide, copper oxide and titanium oxide, also molybdenum disulfide. Advanced technique for characterization of nanostructure materials. These methods we are using because of we have to first derive the metal oxides. For that reason, there are several methods, mainly X-ray diffraction, scanning electron microscope, energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, Ramana spectroscopy, transmission electron microscope, X-ray photoelectron microscope, electrochemical techniques. Ramana spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy, transmission electron microscope, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, electrochemical techniques. Next we will see this is metal oxides. First, nickel iron layered double hydroxide. Synthesis of NiFeLDH. Nano precipitation of FNP manufacture pr uh, procedure to create nickel iron layer two fold hydroxides with tungsten ions which at the same time enhance the inherent and extensive movement of the electrocatalysts. The high valent metal was brought into nickel iron layer double hydroxide as tungsten hydroxide which expands the variety of metal spe species as well as streamlines the electronic design. Besides the glimmer nano precipitation, amalgamation techniques utilized changes the morphological design of the material and gives more edge dynamic destination to oxygen development responses. This prevented the way that Arranged from FMP has astounding electrocatalyst action contrasted with the immaculate material. Firstly, cobalt oxide nanoparticles were synthesized by cost effective and eco friendly green method by using populous silicate leaf extract and cobalt nitrate exohydrate. The prepared nanoparticles were analyzed by various techniques such as. FTIR of nickel oxide can be prepared by multiple methods upon heating above 400 degrees Celsius. Nickel powder reacts with oxygen to give NiO. In some commercial processes, green nickel oxide is made by heating of mixture of nickel powder and water at 1000 degrees Celsius. At the rate for this reaction can be increased by adding of an we will see synthesis of titanium dioxide different strategies can be utilized to blend TiO2 and the most usual utilized techniques incorporate soluble processor substance fume statement CVD and aqueous strategies among others this survey will zero in on chosen arrangement strategies for titanium dioxide photocatalysts. Titanium dioxide nanoparticles were prepared by simple precipitation method using titanium oxide as a starting material. The precursor powder was calcinated in air at temperature raising 400 to 700 degrees Celsius. By this way, we can oxide synthesis of molybdenum disulfide molybdenum disulfide quantum dabs are integrated by effortless combination using ultrasonification helped fluid shedding procedure 
the high and low limit solvents nmp and ethanol water arrangement have been utilized for union of molybdenum molybdenum disulfide till now we have seen how to prepare and synthesis of metal oxide now we are seeing advanced techniques for the characterizations of nanostructured materials first one is xrd expansion x-ray diffraction it is also in the form of powder powder x-ray diffraction x-ray powder diffraction is rapid analytical technique primarily used for phase identifications of crystalline material and can provide information of unit cell dimensions the analyzed materials is finally ground homogenized and the average bulk composition is reading electron microscope in initial sem sem was utilized to know shape of nanostructured materials presented in thesis the sem gives information about the quality morphology diameter length orientation of the prepared nanostructured materials sem uses the beam of electrons to make image of the materials the electron beam passes electromagnetic lenses which interact with material interaction of electron beam does not destroy the material the detector provides the secondary electrons taken out from material and transfers into signal then the signal is displayed at the screen sem measures the image in the range of few nanometers with a magnificence of 20x to 30000x and a spe uh, special resolution of 50 to 100 nanometer the accelerating voltage of electron is in the range of 5 to 20 kilo volt and the detailed information can be found elsewhere the morphology of all nanostructural materials presented in this thesis characterized by uh, sem running at 15 kilo and now we will see energy dispersive spectroscopy in terms eds eds is common technique to identify the chemical constituent in the material especially the presence of elements in, in a sample for this purpose we also use energy dispersive spectroscopy equipped with sem the spectra were collected at different spots of our nanostructure materials in a typical experimental setup the eds consisting four basic units namely electron beam excision source the function of the detector is to transfer energy into potential signal then it is transmitted to the pulse process which gives a signal then passes them to analyzer for displays and analysis now we will see raman spectroscopy raman spectroscopy developed by indian physicist c v raman it is spectroscopy tool to identify the vibrational modes of molecules in general and it is also capable to measure the rotational and low frequency transit systems ramana is widely used in chemistry to uh, elucidate the structural information for the identification of molecules ramana spectroscopy depends on the uh, inelastic scattering of photons thus called raman scattering the use of single wavelength light such as laser in a near uh, ultraviolet or visible or near infrared is utilized even x ray can be involved the interaction of laser light related to excision which result in the variation of energy of laser photons the change in energy shows information related to the vibration modes in each system in a raman spectroscopy a material is existed with laser light the electromagnetic energy is captured with the lens and sent to monochromatic next tem transmission electron microscope tem is among the family a member of sem which involves the electron beam of recording the sample image 
TEM gives information at the atomic level and utilized for characterization of nanostructural compounds. The processes of for the collection of information about the sample is like that of an optical microscope. But in TEM, highly energetic electron beam is used with an uh, accelerating voltage of approximately 200 kilo electro volt. TEM is versatile technique to get information about the chemical composition of the sample. Surface information like crystal structure and the image up to few nanometer just by adjusting the operational mode. TEM is superior to SEM in terms of multidirectional information about the sample such as high magnification resolution but it has certain drawbacks or limitations which require attention few of them are it is time taken technique particularly sample preparation requires a lot of time it is destructive technique it damages the sample it provides local information uh, information uh, about the selected spot of sample it is a bit difficult to operate when compared to SEM photo electron spectroscopy XPS is surface sensitive technique and extensively employed for the determination of composition the working principle of XPS depending on the photo ionization effect and it can be described as the sample is exposed to the x-ray beam and the electrons of at the surface absorbs consequently if the energy of x-ray carries enough energy the electrons are taken out from atom having kinetic energy as a photo electron the relationship between uh, photo energy and kinetic energy is built as the last method is electrochemical techniques all the water parting testing was performed on was stat insightful potential stat a three terminal cell was utilized for making functioning anode and impetus ink was made by blending 10 mg of impetus in 2 ml deionized water and 50 microliter of 5% nephion and sonociated 50 minutes to accomplish on all around. Why are we using these techniques to derive the metal oxides? For what reason we are deriving metal oxides? We are deriving metal oxides to split the water. When we splitting the water, we will get hydrogen and oxygen. We're using hydrogen as a fuel and using liquid hydrogen as the rocket fuel because liquid hydrogen is the fuel used in rockets and various spaceships. It is light and extremely powerful rocket propellant has lowest molecular weight and burns with extreme intensity in a combination with an oxidizer such as liquid oxygen liquid hydrogen yields the highest specific impulse the hydrogen oxygen reaction generates tremendous heats causing the water vapor to expand and exit the engine nozzle at the speed of 10000 miles per hour all that fast moving steam creates the thrust that propels of the rockets from earth and now we'll see there are so many methods of water splitting like simple as uh, photosynthesis and artificial photosynthesis and majorly used artificially like pec photo electrochemical water splitting Water partially utilizing nanometals is one of the promising strategies to create hydrogen in a simpler, less expensive and maintainable way. Adjusting photocatalysts with an appropriate bandwidth material can further develop the generally solar to hydrogen energy change. And here water splitting is a key cycle to produce the greenest nano sustainable wellspring of energy hydrogen water is valuable and plentifully accessible regular asset proficient creation of hydrogen from water is one of the difficult and significant issues is in the ebb and the flow of period of energy emergencies 
huge scope of creation of hydrogen satisfies the future of energy request required alteration in existing materials or strategies in a such a manner regular water uh, splitting through photosynthesis is the ideal one and the utilization of nanomaterials in the age of hydrogen by water uh, splitting is perhaps the most encouraging strategy nanomaterials are the most encouraging materials to create hydrogen by means of photocatalytic water splitting in a more straightforward forward save and economical way the effectiveness of different photochemical water dividing cycles to create inexhaustible hydrogen energy with unique reference to the normal water splitting using regular photosynthesis and investigate the utilization of different metallic as well as nanometallic materials in uh, anthropogenic water dividing processes various parts of nanometals which can further develop the hydrogen creation are additionally surveyed in this section we talked about essential ideas of normal water splitting through photosynthesis fake photosynthesis means artificial photosynthesis Uh, photocatalytic water splitting nanomaterials in water splitting and future viewpoint of hydrogen as an effective wellspring of energy and thank you